Hello friends, welcome to my channel if you are new here. My name is Julie and I am the author of the blog CapturingWonderland.com. I have all kinds of wonderful, easy, simple projects for you. Last minute for Easter, hopefully you still need some Easter crafts to do with your kids or even just for yourself if you're looking for some fun ways to decorate with Easter eggs, wooden or regular ones and some maybe out of the box thinking for you. And coming into Easter, I have all of these weird ideas sometimes that I come up with out of nowhere. And the thought occurred to me that these little wooden eggs that stand up on their own would make pretty spectacular candle holders. I thought to myself, what if I could drill a hole in the top and find some beeswax candles? Do they have such a thing as really tiny candles? And lo and behold, they do. They have super tiny beeswax candles and they're really tall mind you you could always cut it down also like to halfway point and use it that way and i just think that is so adorable so i'm going to show you really quickly how how to do it it's really you know a no-brainer but i'm going to show you how i did it so let me show you what i used i have a number 12 bit this is for pre-jilling holes and then i have seven 32 drill bit. So they do have a little indention on the top, which makes it really simple to see where the middle is. And I'm just gonna put my little pre-driller in there and go right into the center of the top. And pre-drill a little hole there. And that's just to give my other drill bit a place to go. like that and then voila look at that so cute and you can still use these for decor and you can still hide them around the house you could even put like a little fake flower in there if you want to cover it up so anyway I thought that this was a really fun project super simple <laughs> super quick and I think these little egg candle holders are super cute. I'm wanting to try like rub-on transfers on these eggs. You could even sand them down and stain them. You could paint them. So maybe like paint designs on them. All of that would be super fun and I will probably do some of that too because I can't help myself. I like to paint and I like to try new things. So there's that. However, if you try it, let me know. Okay, let's try my next idea. I purchased these from the Dollar Tree like forever ago, but they are just rub-on transfers. So I've got just some gold letters, and then these are actually my favorite. I have gold and black versions of this, and look how adorable that is. I'm gonna try to use these on these wooden eggs. I've never done rub-on transfers before, so this is a completely brand new thought. But I thought if ever there was a time to experiment, fun little Easter crafts is definitely the time. So I think I'm going to use this black one to start. So I feel like this will show up on the eggs a lot better than the gold maybe, just because of the coloring. And if I were to paint these eggs black or another color, I think that that gold would look really pretty. So maybe I'll try that next. So I'm just gonna cut out It'd be really cool if I spelled out Easter on the eggs, but I think to start, I'm just gonna do some of these flowery patterns. Okay, I have this little flower pattern and let's just see how this goes. That is cute. Look at that. So adorable. I love it. Okay, let's try this smaller flower. I'm assuming I'm not doing myself any favors by picking tiny little things, but it is what it is. These eggs are not super big. So cute.
Welcome to my humble kitchen. I had a couple more ideas on how to use not only wooden eggs, but regular eggshells. We'll see how this idea works. So it's a, basically like a little egg chachi and it has a lid for it. And I thought that I would try to make these into candles. We will see how it reacts because obviously this one didn't do so well with water. I just, I measured the volume of what these could hold, which was 0.4 ounces. And then I multiplied that by six to get my beeswax amount. And then because I'm doing half beeswax and half coconut oil, I did half beeswax, half coconut oil. Exactly. So this has 0.8 ounce, 1.8 ounces, and this has 1.8 ounces. And so that's what we're going to do. Bought a little double boiler to make candles easier for myself. And I've got my pot filled with water and it's got a little bit of salt in it. And I'm just gonna turn it on. I'm gonna wait for it to boil, but I'm also going to put my beeswax in here and melt it down. I'm gonna let my beeswax melt all the way and then I'm gonna add in my coconut oil. So far, obviously the eggshells are doing perfectly fine. This is doing perfectly fine as well, but it also didn't immediately crack with water in it. So I'm going to let it cool. Maybe I'll actually stick it in the refrigerator and help it cool faster. And maybe I can avoid breakage that way. And if I can, and if I can avoid it cracking, then I'm going to go ahead and make some more beeswax candle mix. I think that these would make really adorable Easter candles for my tablescape that's coming up. So I thought it was worth the experiment. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge and I'll be back. So it worked. My little egg, my little candle. So cute. I think putting it in the refrigerator definitely helped. So that's what I'm actually gonna do with all of these wooden ones. So I'm going to do the exact same thing, melt my beeswax and then add my coconut oil, melt that. And then I think I'm gonna try a different, I'm gonna try tangerine with the bee. I did clove with the last ones and I could smell it really well with 30 drops. So I'm going to try tangerine with these. this cute little simple centerpiece that you could use them as and here is what the finished product looked like I used some gold rub-on transfers that I got from the Dollar Tree and just a simple process of drilling a little starter hole using my number 12 bit and then I drilled a hole a bigger hole <laughs> drill bit and I did the exact same hole on the bottom of the candle holder and then these are actually bamboo sticks from like the barbecue section in the Dollar Tree. So I had these on hand and I just cut them down anywhere between two and two and a half inches, depending on how deep of a hole I made for the candle. And this just makes sure that this is not going anywhere. And you could glue them together if you wanted to. I just didn't want to do that. That way this is still a candle holder if I want to use it for that. And, and the egg can still be used as an egg. So multi-purpose but I just thought that this was a really cool idea. These wooden candle holders are actually in a bag of five. Hobby Lobby, you can probably buy them elsewhere. I'm sure that I can find them on Amazon and link them below for you as well. And so I just have my little beeswax candles in my little egg and it just gives them st stability and makes it to where they can sit upright and you don't have to worry about them knocking over or causing some kind of a fire hazard. So just a really simple process to create a really simple Easter table centerpiece kind of thing. That was one of the many ideas. Right now I am going to try one that I was kind of curious about because I am using wooden eggs for most of my projects and these are kind of like tchotchkes and you will see the whole process of how I turned them into beeswax candles 
but also they are very plain, which I think is very pretty all by itself. But I also wanted to see if I could turn it in to a watercolored kind of piece of art. Now, I am very new at watercoloring and it's not like a hard, a difficult thing. So I just have some water in my little dish here and I got some paint brushes on clearance from Hobby Lobby. I have my, my little daughter's, my five-year-old's watercolor set here. She does not mind me using, which is Faber and Castell. So fairly good quality, I guess. And so I'm just going to watercolor and see how it turns out. And I thought it would be fun to bring you along with me. I don't really have anything particular in mind. I suppose I should have probably had something more particular in mind, but I kind of just thought I would see how watercolor works on them. fun I think it probably they would have turned out better if I'd have had any kind of an idea of what I was doing like I had zero ideas so I just kind of went with it if you have a plan before you start that would probably be preferable but I don't know the watercolor aspect fun so definitely something you should try or let your kids have fun with so there's that one down about a million more to go so the next fun one that I wanted to do is actually decoupage and I have literally never done decoupage before but I went and I got myself some tissue paper to try it on I'm thinking I'm leaning towards this one was from Hobby Lobby and this one was from the Dollar Tree I kind of like that one kind of works with what I'm doing here with the greens so I think I'm actually gonna try that so to do decoupage you need Mod Podge and either gift tissue or you can use napkins also I have seen people use that and I just wanted to try it out so I guess I'm just going to rip it into pieces Mod podging an egg is definitely not my favorite pastime. I'm not a big messy get glue all over my fingers type of person. <laughs> I guess um, the jury will be out until this dries. I wanted to show you this. It's actually really pretty, honestly. If I knew what I was doing better, it would probably look better than that. But I do like it. I feel like it deserves being displayed somewhere. Maybe I'll put it in one of my little display cases. That's probably what I'll do. The last project that I wanted to try with eggs was actually trying to make a whole egg beeswax candle. I've seen it done and I love it, but I am nervous. <laughs> I kind of wish that I had been better about just cracking my eggs. Yeah, so. Ah, there we go. Now I'm going to go and empty out this, empty this out. I'm gonna go thoroughly clean these eggs. And obviously this is a really good excuse to make brownies. So, but I'm going to thoroughly clean these out with warm water and soap because you wanna make sure either to clean them out really well or to bake them. And I will have all the instructions on how to do these things in a post on my blog post for all the good reasons. Obviously you do not want bacteria getting into your beeswax candle. So you wanna make sure to sterilize your eggs really well before you make candles using the shells. So you don't want any raw egg or anything like that left in it. So I'm gonna go and clean these really well and then we will get on to the next part of the process, which is getting the beeswax and the coconut oil ready and also putting our wicks inside there to make a whole egg. And you will need an entire egg for each candle because we're gonna to have to break it at the very end to get the candle out. So, 
Next step. All right. So each of my eggs turned out to be 1.8 ounces. It's exactly what they turned out to be. So I did 3.6 ounces total of beeswax and coconut oil. And now I'm just setting in my wicks to my little eggies. And I'm just gonna hold them down really and pray that they're mostly on the bottom because I really don't wanna get out my hot glue gun. But you could get out your hot glue gun and this process would be much more guaranteed than what I'm doing at the moment. It's just kind of like flying by the seat of my pants. So now I'm going to have to very protect my table from this and very slowly pour. I did make the holes a little bit bigger though. Okay, I would definitely hot glue the wicks to the bottom of the egg because the wick becomes like not even, like it becomes like a noodle because of the heat. So, okay, I'm going to actually use a little baby clothespin here. There, that should hold them. I used itty bitty little, little clothespins here. <laughs> so that, how we're gonna play that today. I'm gonna see how these do their thing. And also if you do spill wax like that, in the container that your little egg candles are sitting in, move them to a clean spot because when the wax dries, it will adhere the egg to it and you really don't want to chance breaking them by trying to like move them, like squeeze. It's hard to explain it, but these aren't as bad because they're completely full of wax. So if you break the egg, it's not terrible. But if you're doing the, the half the cracked egg version that I showed you earlier, then you may have problems. So just, move them and be careful. I do have a little bit of beeswax and coconut oil left in here, but I'm just gonna leave it. I have nothing else to make into a candle for the moment. All right, let us let these candles sit and then I'm excited to show them to you when they're done. All right, next day I let them cure overnight. I actually need to get some scissors so I can trim the wicks, but let's see about peeling them and see what that looks like. And you could even leave some of the eggshell on just for looks if you want to. There we have a little egg candle. Look how cute that is. And there's our second little egg candle. So cute. Guys, I really hope you do these projects because they're adorable. Look at that. Okay, I'm gonna get some scissors real quick and cut these wicks. All right, look at my little egg candle. Look how adorable that is. You could use it in like a little nest or you could put it in a little egg holder and it would look really cute too. So adorable. I'm probably going to use it in my spring tablescape, which is coming up soon. I have great ideas. I'm actually going to be doing a Mr. McGregor's garden type of theme with going along with my Peter Rabbit spring pictures. If you didn't get any of those, I would, if I was you, I would head to my site and go sign up for my subscribers library and get all of the free printables and free watercoloring pages of Peter Rabbit and his friends. But this was so much fun. I really enjoyed this project in particular. Egg candles, they just make sense, guys, for all sorts of reasons, including the fact that you're going to throw your eggshells out or compost them anyway. Why not get a use out of them first? And beeswax is compostable, so even if there's a little bit left in it, it's a natural material, it will not harm it at all. And just, you know, it's such a unique way to add some spring home decor into your tablescapes or around your house. I have more ideas for them and you will see them in my tablescape, but I hope you enjoyed this entire process and there is so much more that I want to share with you and it's coming soon. So happy Easter from our family to yours and I hope it's a beautiful day with tons of wonderful family memories or just fun with your friends or if you're by yourself. I hope that you have a lovely peaceful afternoon. Thanks again guys for watching all the way through. If you have made it this far, don't forget to give the video a like if this is content that appeals to you and consider subscribing if you are not. I would love to have you a part of my community here at Capturing Wonderland and I will talk to you in the next one guys. Bye. And makes it to where they can sit upright and you don't have to worry about them knocking over or causing some kind of a fire hazard. So just a really simple process. Maybe don't move them around like that. 
at, they are like tchotchkes. I found them at Michael's and they have a lid and they're just this, oh man, that one cracked. Well, that won't do. That's what made that noise. All by itself, but oh my. Ergs. Gewer. How do chicks get these things open? 